So hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me today. And I really hope you'll find this uh, interesting, um, uh, the topic. I think it's fascinating. So I'm oh, oh, sorry. For some reason, the slides uh, decided to jump. So let's start. So today I'm going to talk about uh, exploration of C++ metaprogramming. And first of all, I want to start with introducing myself. So my name is Inbal Levy. I'm a C++ enthusiast, and I work as embedded software engineer at SolarEdge. Uh, we work in on, I'm working on smart hot devices, but SolarEdge in general is doing, um, we're doing smart uh, home systems, uh, you know, uh, using sunlight to produce energy. So, um, you know, it, it's a nice thing to do. Uh, I, I feel I'm doing something good to the world. Uh, I'm also one of the organizers of Core CPP Conference and User Group. Uh, I'm a member of Workgroup 21, which is the ESO uh, work, uh, work group for C++, and uh, one of the founders of the Israeli national body uh, of ESO. Uh, I also studied physics, uh, and I love math. So if, you, if you, anyone wants to talk with me about math later, you're most welcome. So I'm going to start with motivation. Why, why is this uh, topic interesting? So templates are a powerful tool for C++ programmers. I'm sure you all agree with me. Um, each C++ version have evolved templates, and it's adding a better usage uh, to the language. And we'll, we'll see the value of adding templates uh, to your code. So. Uh, I hope you can read uh, at least the first line. So I don't know if you recognize it by view, but this is a, a, a style guide for C++. Uh, and it, it says here, avoid complicated template uh, programming. So you, you might expect that this is something that, that is uh, that, that only some very high, uh, very low level companies uh, are doing, but this style guide is actually, actually belongs to Google. And I, I mean, th this is one of the, of the most advanced companies in the world and, and they still uh, recommend that. And I don't blame them. So basically uh, using templates might, uh, might get some of your developers to, to feel uncomfortable with the code. And, and this is something that companies are uh, considering. So I would hope that today I will be able to uh, increase the amount of people that will feel comfortable with templates. And uh, in general, I would hope that uh, at the end of the talk, you'll like to add them in your code. So as I said, we'll see, we we'll also see, uh, at least to my opinion, how C++20 created a paradigm shift in the way we use metaprogramming. So uh, the general outline would be, we're gonna start with uh, talking about what are templates. Uh, we're gonna uh, go over adding templates to existing code, uh, briefly overload resolution and ADL, which I think are important tools regardless of, of uh, using template metaprogramming. Uh, we're gonna see conditions at compile time before C++20 and conditions at compile time using C++20 and a bit beyond. We have, I also addressed some things that are um, post C++20 that aren't in the language yet. And of course, uh, I, I can't tell if they will be. And advanced methods for controlling compile time logic. So first of all, what are templates? So templates allows creating class or function so here you can see a template class and you get the type, uh, template type. And of course you can do something with the type. And here you can see uh, ways to declare template functions. So you could either get the type uh, and, and get params from, from the type if you need them, or you could just avoid getting the params and, and, uh, but still have the strong type uh, guarantees. So function template is usable only if definition exists. So clearly very similar to normal uh, functions. So this is, uh, this is a form to create a declaration and this is a, uh, clearly this is a definition. 
Now, uh, instantiation of function template can either be explicit or implicit. You can either uh, explicitly instantiate with, as you can see here, it's the full type. And here you can, uh, uh, this one's using uh, type deduction, argument deduction, sorry. And here you can see uh, implicit instantiation uh, by call, implicit by call with argument deduction. So you can see here that you don't get uh, the argument templates uh, explicitly. And you could either, you could also uh, implicit instantiation by pointer. Now, this is important because um, one thing that we can do with templates is uh, clearly create a library. And those uh, differences are important because uh, we could do it in two ways. The first way would be to expose our uh, definition in the header. In that case, uh, if the user, when the user includes our header, he will be able to instantiate in his code the function with any type that he wishes and clearly he get the implementation. And a different way that we can do it, we can uh, just uh, put the, uh, the, the, the declarations, uh, sorry, the uh, instantiations in the header and have the definition uh, uh, hidden. And in that way, uh, we can limit the types that the user uh, is able to use. So we're basically um, uh, doing this as a closed library. So, um, other than that, I also want to mention that uh, C++20 adds some synthetic sugar for declaring function templates. Uh, I haven't used it here because I think it's less explicit, less suitable for, for presentation, but you can, uh, you can of course, uh, go and, and look at it uh, later. Um, it, okay. So... As I, as I mentioned, of course, templates are evaluated at compile time. Uh, they're Turing com complete. That means that you can achieve uh, any functionality of a Turing machine with templates. Uh, they have a few layers of usage. So as I said, as I briefly mentioned before, and I'm repeating here, uh, that they can be used to avoid uh, rewriting uh, the repeated logic. So we could... Uh, write the functionality once, and and in that way we don't have to uh, we don't have to repeat ourselves. And they can also be used to write a generic code, uh, and, and as I mentioned, uh, provide it as a library. And they also provide a mechanism for moving logic uh, to compile time, which assists us by uh, by moving the sum of the errors uh, to compile time, uh, allowing us to recognize them earlier. She's also great in um, software development. So, as I said, uh, uh, it, it is, is also providing a simplest way to, to generate the code. So, um, it's, it common uh, mis... Uh, uh, some, some people may think that adding templates um, might increase the size of your code, but that's not true. They actually have a very similar size and compilation time to, to regular uh, code. So, and, and they even have some other benefits that uh, by, I'll show you them on the next slide. So, uh, adding templates to existing code. So consider the following uh, template free code. We have overload resolution by parameters, of course, and you have the, overhead, uh, the overload, uh, the first overload here and the second overload here. And here we have uh, the uh, calling to the overloads uh, uh, declared here. So of course, uh, if you'll add another uh, overload, that would be ambiguous, it's clear. And another thing that ne we need to consider is that if I want to call uh, the function with some class and say this is my library, then I have to uh, explicitly add the uh, the declaration to my uh, to my library, and and that means that I need to change uh, other parts of the code. So, as I said, we could uh, replace our overloads with a single tem template function, and this way we get three main advantages. So the first one is code size. Uh, uh, when when we um, when we write a program. 
we would like to be able to uh, identify bugs as easy as possible, as quickly as possible, and a large code base might affect that. And in addition, uh, errors and bugs can be fixed in a single place. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, code changes are also uh, something that you could um, you could avoid uh, if you're using templated library and you don't have to change different parts of your code. And the third thing is the binary size. So the advantage of, of code generated uh, by templates is that you only get the uh, instantiation that you're actually using. So here you can see uh, instantiation for int, and you can see that in the, in the assembly as well, and instantiation for, for um, float. And uh, clearly, it's not going to uh, create the other, all the other types in the world or, or anything of this sort. So, uh, partial specialization of a class. So, first of all, we can also uh, use templates in order to identify uh, if we want uh, to have uh, a partial specialization and to uh, recognize different cases. So uh, we could have, here you can see the full type. We can have here the instantiation for uh, type that is the same. Here, of course, you get different types. And you can see that, uh, sorry, and you can see that uh, the first one with different types will clearly call the first uh, specialization and the second one will call the second, the second specialization. So it gives, gives us a way to uh, identify different conditions. By the way, all the code uh, will uh, I can I will upload it to my GitHub, so you'll be able to look at it later. So here, uh, this is a, a example for partial specialization of a function. So we have a wrapper, and again, you can get the type here, and you can um, uh, also. Uh, so, so this is this is a type uh, template, and here you get an overload of, of functions. One is for general types, and the second one is for a type that is uh, wrapped. So, of course, again, we can. Uh, so you can see here the two um, two overloads, and of course, we can see that. Uh, if we if we call in foo with type that is unwrapped, we get the first uh, overload, and uh, if we call it with with the wrap type, we'll get the second one. All right. So overload resolution and ADL. So uh, again, in this talk, I'm not going too deep into into those topics, but there were two very interesting talks in CppCon. Uh, uh, in uh, CppCon uh, 2020, so you're most welcome to go and, and look. Uh, the first one would be by uh, Judy Haynes, I believe, that was going deeper into um, uh, type traits and implementations. And the second one is um, by Andres Fertig, I hope I uh, pronounced his name correctly. And he was really going very deeply uh, into template metaprogramming, again, uh, if you're interested. But I will go very briefly on this topic because I think it's a very important one. So, uh, okay, so first of all, uh, uh, resolution of template functions. So the compiler creates a set of candidates. And the ca compiler also creates a subset of viable functions. So uh, it counts the number of parameters, etc., and make sure that it's suitable. And then we get uh, those three ways to identify, uh, to have our lookup. So first of all, there's a name lookup, partial ordering of function templates, and then a template arg argument deduction. And I'm going to go uh, deeper into that uh, in the next slide. But uh, in any case, the best viable function is the one whose parameters uh, all have uh, either better or equal ranked implicit conversion sequence. So I uh, remember, of course, that uh, uh, member functions get their type, their uh, self, the, the this pointer by uh, as a, uh, the first parm. So as I said, overload resolution uh, gets uh, done in three ways. The first one is the name lookup. As I mentioned, uh, we're looking for the, 
for the uh, function by, by its name. And the second one is partial ordering uh, function templates. So we're choosing the, the function template uh, according to the most specialized version, as we saw before. And the third thing is uh, template argument deduction. So uh, in addition to looking at the scope that uh, our function template appears at, we also uh, look at the scope of, of the arguments that it gets. And uh, this is something uh, that, is, that, that might surprise people that are not familiar with this technique. So uh, this is, of course, what gives us, uh, lets us uh, have uh, free functions for operators. So as uh, I mentioned, uh, the most suitable uh, function will be identified. And if there are more than one viable function, we'll get ambiguity. And again, as I mentioned before, we get it as a compiler error, which is, I, I believe, it's a, it's a great benefit, of course. So I just want to mention one more thing. Uh, I'm sure you all heard of uh, Sfina. Uh, so again, I'm not going to go deeper into that topic here. But uh, the idea is that just uh, um, not being able to instantiate the function uh, for if, if we're just the looking of the proper overload is not the thing that uh, creates error. The thing that create, if, if an overload wouldn't be found, that's not the problem. The problem would be on calling the function that we're, that we're using. So again, these are, are very interesting topics and there are, um, I, I will really recommend you to go and, and see um, the more, uh, the more the, uh, two hours talks of templates uh, from CPPCon 2020. So um, yeah, and, and again, as I said, if no viable candidate, uh, candidate is found, then uh, we get the error by the calling. So conditions at compile time before C++ 20. So as I mentioned, uh, C++ 20, uh, sorry, uh, in general, C++ have a very powerful tool for uh, conditioning and compile time, and that's type traits. So type traits is a library. It's uh, verified as, of course, at compile time. And uh, in general, uh, type trait uh, would have a member that is either true or false. Uh, the member can be uh, retrieved either by uh, from C++ 11, it's just by uh, approaching the value, and from C++ 17, you can get that by underscore uh, v. You can have the access to the to the boolean. And uh, another thing that is uh, very interesting, I think that um, sorry that uh, started in C++ 20 is a function type uh, type trait. So we can have uh, context, uh, we, we have additional types of type traits that are uh, in the form of function and they're uh, um, a context of function and they also identifies a situation. We will later, we'll later review uh, specifically on the ones that added on C++ 20. So um, I'm not gonna go, again, I'm not gonna go uh, into each of those type traits. I just wanna, wanted to show you that there are a lot of them and uh, they're doing a, a variety of things. And of course, uh, we can have, uh, uh, they generally have information on the type. Uh, you can uh, identify whether a type is a reference or a class or aggregate, etc. cetera. Uh, you can have CV uh, quantifiers and, and remove them, uh, to identify them and, and add them and remove them. Uh, we can also uh, change the sign of our, of our type and uh, etc. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, C20 also added uh, functions type traits. So we have uh, things that relate to member relationships. Is a corresponding member is pointer interconventual con virtual with class. Sorry, and we also have a constant evaluation. Um, which I think is, is a very interesting one. So two main uh, types of conditions exist. So the way I see it at least, uh, you, you could either use um, a condition that, is, uh, that looks like a, a Boolean and, and basically just tries to test your uh, type. 
And in that case, I would uh, I would have created the boolean and then just use it in my in my uh, in my user code uh, like this. And you can also have a condition that actually uh, wants to perform something according to that. So uh, in this case, you could uh, you could create this function. You can do things um, inside the functions according to the to the conditions. So at least I see it as sort of a different approaches and we'll see later uh, what's in C++20, how, how things are, are very similar, but uh, with a bit of a different syntax. So uh, as I said, uh, before C++20, uh, we, we had a few ways to uh, create the uh, conditions on compile time. And again, uh, I. I really recommend. Uh, there's there's another talk by uh, by uh, John Kalb that is uh, it was given in C, uh, CppCon uh, 2019, and he goes very deeply uh, into those topics and really doing a, a broad overview. Uh, but I just wanted to mention here that uh, we have uh, a way th the way to to do uh, compile time conditioning and to classify before uh, C++20. So uh, first of all, C++11 would be um, using enable if, here you can see. And I've created two overloads. Uh, the first one is print triviality, and uh, it only uh, accepts a trivial type. And the way that enable if works is uh, it can define the, uh, the type. And it default uh, is void, as you can see in gray here. Um, th that's why it's optional. And if if the overload is suitable, then the return type will be created, and we'll have the overload for the function. And the second uh, second overload here is for non-trivial types. So again, you get the uh, uh, the return type of the function, and that's how you instantiate it. Uh, okay, so uh, in C++17, we have const expire if, which is uh, written if const expire, as you can see. And, um, and, and here you can do something that is very similar. So you can div div uh, divide your, um, your decisions by is trivial, uh, by the type trait in const expire if. Uh, but the difference is that here, you, here is the non-trivial type. But the difference here that, that the function is, is, uh, exists uh, regardless of, of if you're, I mean, you instantiate the function and then you uh, choose your, your condition. Either way, the functionality will be very similar. So um, Another thing that I want to mention is uh, C++17 conjunction, disjunction, and negation. So um, these are uh, special type traits. I think they're going to be very useful in C++20 when you start using concepts, of course. So uh, conjunction would be and operator. And here you can see the use of uh, is all same, and of course you have uh, you have the use of, of the conjunction uh, for uh, variate, variate templates. And again, I don't wanna I don't wanna go uh, into variate, variate templates here, but uh, there are really good talks uh, again from CTPCon, so you're most welcome uh, to to watch that. Um, and the second one here is uh, the um, the one that takes uh, the arguments and, and use them in case we actually want to do something with the with the uh, params. So uh, this is uh, a disjunction, uh, very similar uh, that what we just saw, and uh, of course uh, negation. And uh, again, uh, I do wanna I, I wanna emphasize that uh, the reason uh, the reason for using uh, those forms and not using just uh, the operators would um, so the the operators uh, sorry uh, these forms actually would uh, optimize by avoiding instantiation of the parameter proc. So the operators are less uh, efficient and those would be able to identify um, 
so for example, if we have disjunction and the first uh, condition is true, then you wouldn't have to go over and instantiate all the rest of those. So I would recommend you to use them instead. Uh, okay, so uh, this was the boilerplate of the talk, and now we got to uh, uh, conditions at compile time uh, in C20. So, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, C20 created a paradigm shift in metaprogramming. And concept and constraints uh, allow the user to introduce new type category uh, the way I see it. So, before C20, we had uh, some conditions, and the conditions sort of defined the type. But I think it was, uh, again, I, I, I'm uh, fond of math. So I think that in a way that was limiting uh, the type to, to things that were uh, defined by those, uh, by, by those internal, internal um, properties. And I think that in a way, uh, uh, concepts allow us to, to define uh, something that is more similar to type category and makes our code more readable and, and uh, allows us to, to uh, be more expressive in our code. So in the following slides, we will review uh, C++20 new type traits, as I mentioned them before, uh, new syntax for controlling the overload set, uh, new tools uh, to use C++20 uh, template metaprogramming, and uh, a bit beyond. Uh, so I'm going to also show some things that haven't been uh, added to C++20 yet, or to the language, sorry, not to. Um, so uh, again, you can see uh, different classes. Uh, these, these are the classes that were added, uh, uh, type trait classes, and you can see here uh, different um, um, things that are uh, related to type relationships and properties. And uh, as I mentioned, the function, uh, the functions, uh, and again, I think uh, is constant evaluated is a very interesting one because it allows us to get uh, more uh, broader. Um, I, I we we get a stronger uh, way to identify our uh, our state in the code, and to have a, a better compile time programming. And again. Uh, if you just briefly go over those, uh, you, you probably uh, identify very quickly that these all provide uh, greater reflection abilities. Uh, so again, I think uh, this is a great advantage and, and we are definitely getting a uh, more uh, usable tool here. Okay. So concepts. Concepts are a way uh, to define uh, restrictions on the type category, as I mentioned before. So here you can see uh, the type, and you can define the concept name and a condition. And the expression is not evaluated; it's only validated on the on the declaration of the concept. So notice uh, side effects, etc., are not uh, performed. And the condition can be uh, either a simple condition, true or false, uh, requires expression, uh, which will return. Uh, true or false. So here you can see the requires expression and you get the type and here uh, you evaluate the expression. And you can uh, also get uh, also use require expression that uh, describes some condition on the return type. So here we get uh, the condition on return type and here we get uh, the condition uh, for the type that we receive. Of course, uh, all right. And concepts can be used to identify whether a type belongs to a specific type category. So again, we can define the concept name, and here we can define a trivial concept, as we saw before. And we can identify whether uh, the type is trivial. And again, if you'll uh, compare that to the code we saw before, you'll, I think uh, this is more readable. Now, again, we could, of course, uh, create functions that use type trait and not use them uh, directly in the code and it would be uh, everything would be uh, the same but I still think it gives us some advantages and uh, again concept uh, cannot be constrained uh, so you can't have a concept uh, to restrict the concept 
and a concept cannot uh, recursively refer to itself. So those things to uh, to keep in mind uh, if your code base would be um, uh, using uh, concepts uh, heavily, which I, I would hope that it will. Um, so again, as, a, as I mentioned, there are easy ways to declare a concept uh, uh, using auto here, for example, but I haven't put them in the slides because uh, I want to be more expressive. But uh, again, you can, you can of course, uh, see them. So uh, this, these concepts were added uh, to C++20. And uh, again, I don't want to go into each of them, but I'm sure you can recognize uh, coupling with, uh, with the type traits that we saw before. So in a way, uh, it's clear that the concepts are, are trying to give us a better tool uh, to do similar things to the ones we did uh, using type traits. Uh, so constraints are, as I said, they're uh, used to restrict the type uh, that can instantiate the template. And we can define uh, in a form that resembles uh, what we saw before uh, with uh, enable if um, in, in the previous examples, uh, pre C++20. So I, at least uh, I, I see it like that. So I think that this is in a way uh, resembles uh, the way we used uh, enable if. So constraints, uh, as I said, they express an, an additional uh, data on the types. So they constrain the, the types that we can get in the templates, of course. And they can be used to restrict uh, template parameters, variables, and they're normalized, uh, the normalizing of constraints is the, is the process of unpacking them. So basically, you unpack them, and you have conjunction between the different constraints. So they can be added. Uh, yeah, they can be added. Sorry, to the code in uh, uh, one of the following ways. Uh, and I'm going to go uh, in the next slides and present each each of those ways. But notice that there are different. There are four places you can add them in in the class. So um, again, as I, as I mentioned, uh, we can add them uh, in the declaration of the template parameter. And we can add them uh, using require clause after the template parameter list. We can use them as a placeholder uh, for our arbitrary function template deduction. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, I'm not going to show those here, but uh, the, the, this form here in the talk, but uh, the uh, use of auto uh, for the template uh, declaration uh, would allow us to uh, declare concepts before the auto. And uh, using require clause after the template parameter list. So here you can see the requires is uh, the last to appear. So remember this uh, four ways. Uh, we'll go back to that later. So uh, let's uh, have a real-world use, uh, real use case. Uh, let's look at wrapper type. So uh, as I said, the type category can be used in a broader way than the type, uh, the way I see it at least. And uh, again, it's not a technical implementation. I'm referring to the, to the expressiveness uh, and the um, building of, of different uh, concepts in our code. So, um, so I'm defining a concept called constraint data. And constraint data requires to have the data member, uh, of course. And uh, data type, uh, this, this data type satisfies uh, the concept that I've, uh, that I've uh, declared. So I uh, define here a wrapper that accepts only type that satisfies the constraint data. And here you can see that I uh, deleted the first uh, over, uh, this first constructor, and here I only define a constructor that uh, takes the constrained data as I defined uh, the concept. All right. So of course uh, this will uh, work properly, and here we'll get the error uh, use of deleted function now. 
I got a question uh, last time I, I gave this talk, uh, why to use the deleted. So if we want to use the delete, you just get uh, an error that says that no matching function uh, for call uh, was found. But I, I mean, uh, this is just for explaining. Um, uh, the, the reason to use uh, here is, is just for the uh, presentation. But, but you, I mean, I still think it's uh, somewhat uh, expressive more specific and maybe uh, allows us to identify, um, get better error codes. So it's up to you if you if you decide to use that or not. All right. Um, so explicit circuit breaking. So uh, as you've seen, uh, concepts are a powerful tool. And I just want to mention here uh, a proposal that is not part of C++20, and it's something that is uh, more the future, um, it, it actually being discussed currently on ESO. Uh, so if you have uh, a very uh, complex code, uh, say, just as here, and you, I mean, this is a simple form, but let's say that uh, uh, you want to constrain the type that, uh, that the uh, constructor receives, and and you also uh, uh, identify the type is is uh, so so in a way your type is already um, uh, satisfies uh, the concept. Uh, so so when you're trying to evaluate uh, the proper constructor. So uh, sorry. So I stumbled into that when I uh, was working in in a work group on exceptions. Uh, sorry, not exceptions. Uh, executors that was a wishful wishful thinking, uh, and and I'm sure that's also common. I mean, in a lot of projects. So of course you're not gonna stumble into that if you're using more reasonable that you'll stumble into that if you're writing a library or more complex code or use extensively in concepts. But I still think you should ident uh, uh, know that uh, if you if you're uh, if you have this condition, you, you might want to be able to break the um, uh, break the recursion by by identifying that the type that you got is uh, similar to uh, is the same type as the one that you're just instantiating. Uh, so if you get the, this compiler, that's very useful uh, to be aware of that. And again, as I, as I said, this is a proposal. Uh, it's not currently in the language. I mean, uh, the concepts are not currently in the language. Of course, you can. Uh, the type traits uh, can be used. And uh, this is by Isabel Morta, and I, I think it's a very interesting uh, proposal. So advanced, uh, now we got to the final part of, of the talks, uh, advanced methods for compile time logic. So um, I want to represent an idea uh, of, of lazy evaluation. So I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with it. Uh, but I, I wanna, I want you to think of that in, uh, in um, relating to temp to templates uh, meta programming. So uh, temporaries are created and returned from operations, and occasionally they could be cost costly. So we want to reduce the instantiation of templates, and uh, we could improve uh, the compile time of our program by avoiding unnecessary overhead. So in the following examples, we see. Uh, we're going to see two different um, um, uh, methods, so each of them is doing something a bit different. But this is like the general um, the general direction that we want to go on. So expression templates, which is actually a very uh, quite old method. Um, so here we can see. Uh, so again, I want you to. Uh, not focus on the specific example, which is a, a very common example uh, using vector, etc. But I want you to, to uh, get the general approach of using the proxy, uh, the, the proxy uh, class uh, to hold the struct. So um, here you can see the constructor uh, for vector wrapper and uh, copy constructor. Uh, of course, you have here uh, brackets uh, to implementations of brackets uh, operator, if needed, uh, according to what you need in your class, and operator equal and uh, plus. Uh, and here, uh, assignment, of course, and uh, adding. And here you can see um, 
the usage of this uh, wrapper, vector wrapper class. So we could um, raise the um, adding operator and define this class uh, the called uh, uh, of type sum. And this class is basically what it does, I'll show it in the next slide, but what it does is basically holds the result of the operator class that we use on our vector types, uh, wrapper actually. So uh, here you can see uh, that we return the, uh, the, the vector wrapper type, but, but uh, we're using the special, the special sum class that we just mentioned. So oh, again, all the all the uh, examples uh, I'll publish the uh, Godbolt links uh, later on my GitHub, so you can uh, enter and play with it. And here you can see uh, the sum class. So we have the constructor and gets the the objects uh, by reference, and then it holds uh, the objects that it got, and and uh, and the lazy uh, uh, is is done by. Um, by not instantiating templates. So basically, uh, sorry, uh, uh, temps. So basically saving some of the overhead. And uh, again, uh, you can see here um, the, the uh, function that uses the vector wrapper. And here, uh, of course, what is called behind the scene is not our uh, plus operator, but uh, uh, some, uh, and, and you can see uh, less instantiations of the temps. So only uh, the, the only uh, here you can see constructor of some class, as I mentioned, and uh, eventually we get only uh, the instantiation will all be in the in the last um, in the last operator. Um, yeah. So uh, there's a very interesting talk uh, from uh, 2014 by uh, Klaus uh, Ingenblair. And he's talking about uh, expression templates in a in a much broader way, uh, and they use he, he actually wrote a Blaze library, and he's talking about using them there. So I also recommend you to to go and watch it. It's a it's a very interesting talk. So uh, regions ranges uh, could have uh, in a way we could have got a, a, a good way to have a similar functionality in ranges. Um, ranges were added to C plus plus twenty, but uh, not just not just yet, uh, because uh, what we are lacking is um, zip and zip with uh, 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 range adapters, um, and, and and they were they were not uh, they were uh, sorry algorithms, and they were not uh, uh, added to the language, so. Um, uh, ranges, as I said, uh, in in uh, C++ twenty uh, are um, let's say widely inspired by Eric Nibbler's uh, Rangers v3 library. So you can al also uh, play with with this uh, more. Uh, there's more implementations there than uh, there are in the standard uh, currently. And uh, if we would have had uh, zip with uh, we could have done something uh, very similar to what we saw in a previous slide. Uh, so I'm just introducing uh, the plus operator uh, for those of you that haven't uh, had a chance to use it. And, and we could have used um, uh, the zip with uh, for the lazy evaluation uh, that we saw uh, in the previous slide. So here I'm just uh, pointing those are colored in red because they're not a standard implementation, but those are the from ranges v uh, And I, I think uh, this is uh, much more elegant and simplified. And uh, of course, um, again, we don't have it in language yet, but uh, I would hope that in the near future, we'll, it will probably be um, uh, discussed and, and I would hope to it will get to C++ 23. And uh, there's also a very interesting talk on rages uh, by uh, Dvir Itzhaki, which is a member of my national body, uh, the Israel national body. And you're most welcome to watch it. It's from uh, Speak on uh, 2019. So, um, all right. So uh, 
another method that I want to mention, another thing that I want to mention is that, um, as we saw before, our concern instantiation is uh, by order. And we can have uh, this, here I'm showing the uh, last, uh, the fourth condition for the last, um, uh, that requires that appears uh, last, and the third condition uh, evaluation here. And uh, I, I expected, uh, I, I did some testing and I expected them to act the same. But the truth is uh, that I saw a difference in performance. So I'm talking here about um, uh, compile time of the program, not uh, runtime. And again, you could have, uh, this, this benchmark was made on, on GCC uh, uh, trunk, the latest version on uh, x86 uh, and uh, with optimi optimization level 03. And I would love to get, uh, I mean, if you uh, uh, try this on your system and, and see if you also get similar results, I was surprised by that. But uh, I think it's a very, it's a very interesting observation. And uh, it, could, but it could still be, a, I mean, it is an implementation detail. Um, uh, it could be, uh, uh, change in, in, I would say, uh, later implementations, uh, compiler implementations. But I still want you to take something uh, from this observation. And I, I would hope that when you're writing um, uh, constrained code, uh, uh, extensive use of concepts, you, I would at least think that it's best to put the uh, breaking condition in the, in the uh, first, in the place for first evaluation in a way this would um, uh, allow the, the compiler to identify earlier the, if, if the condition is not met. So just like uh, on binary search, when, when you want to um, eliminate the bigger part uh, as early as possible. And um, so, so here I would maybe put additional conditions. Of course, you could use uh, disjunction, et cetera, to put everything in simple place, but I would think that that's more readable. So I would recommend um, considering that when you're defining, um, when you're using the concepts. So takeaways from this talk. Uh, so template metaprogramming is a powerful tool. And C++ extends uh, our uh, way to use uh, the usability of, of, of this uh, uh, very, very interesting and very powerful um, 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 I, I wouldn't say method, but um, it, it's a, like a, a paradigm in a way because you can um, you can pass more of your code uh, to compile time, uh, especially if you're performance sensitive. But I also think it have other uh, great advantages. And as I said, concepts and constraints are really uh, making our code more expressible. Uh, I mean, you can judge for it by yourself, but I think it's really uh, much clearer uh, to use them. And uh, I would hope that uh, that uh, uh, other things will also be added to the language to simplify uh, our use. So uh, as I said, uh, C++ uh, added the uh, concepts to the language, so, so uh, go ahead and use them. I, I really recommend them. And let's strive to extend uh, the use of them. So uh, these are a few books that I, I just wanted to mention briefly here. So of course, the classical um, uh, uh, book here is by uh, David and, and others. And uh, this one's, uh, it's a very, uh, it's covering a very uh, broad uh, topic very broadly. But uh, um, uh, here you have uh, some shorter um, publication that is actually uh, focusing on a bit more advanced uh, or advanced things, and but but doesn't cover uh, the topic as as this one. And uh, of course, the uh, classic uh, publication here. Uh, you can also uh, I'm sure there's a lot of others books, and I I would love to get your recommendations. Uh, I think it's a, it's a great topic. And links to, to the talks that I mentioned. Uh, so here is uh, the te uh, template metaprogramming by uh, Judy Hines, and he's really 
focusing on type traits and also on the implementation, uh, he shows some uh, some implementations of type traits. Um, so I think that's a very interesting uh, if if you're uh, if you want to explore it further. And of course, the back to basics track from CPPCon 2020 um, by Andres Fatigue. And um, uh, I mentioned um, uh, also, uh, there's also a very interesting talk by Timor that tried to address all the different things that changed in C20. And um, this is the talk from 2019 that uh, does more of a background on, on the things that we had so far. And this is the talk by Dvir Tsarki on, on ranges uh, that I mentioned. So um, I also added some technical data and uh, the papers that I mentioned, um, I think that's a very interesting paper. Uh, I would really, I, it's really currently on the mailing list and I'm looking forward to see what will come out of, of those. So that's it. Uh, thank you. And I hope you're now inspired to go and explore uh, plus 20 templates and add them more broadly uh, to your code. And I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. <laughs>